Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Europa Universalis 4 Conquest of Paradise Bugged Edition with myself, Aruba, yeah. and Northern Lion. <laughs> What's up, gents? Uh, oh, hi. Yeah, I'm you know. Troubleshooting. In troubleshooting yeah, edition, you. whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm saying just get back into it. I'm saying just yeah, start it up. Let's, let's get okay. started yeah. and maybe we're gonna, hang out on speed 2. Yeah, so we're going to crank it down to speed 2 for a little bit and uh, see if maybe we can fix the problem. We're not sure what's happening, so mm -hmm. fingers yeah, crossed. Hope. Fingers crossed. Anyway. So this fortified house building, uh, for it's a unique native building. It gives you plus ten to your force limit. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Yeah, you can only have one. I built mine. Yeah. I have I have a force limit of twenty one now. There can only Jesus be one. Christ. Uh. Plus, it also stacks with the native idea that gives you plus thirty three percent force limit yeah. modifier. Well, I would build it, but very I'm broke lucky, right now. Very lucky that uh, this is a cooperative series. Mm. Because between yeah. you not losing your colonies over and over and the fact that you built that building already, you could have probably, like, snowballed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've had, I've had some, uh, some bonuses. Or I have, like, an advantage for having played individually. Oh, what? yeah. Or I just good. invited you to a federation, and it, it spammed me. It says you've declined like a thousand times. I had a little, I had like a little <laughs> banner pop up, but like it a, wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me click on it. I was like, "What is this? What is this? I, I, what is I'm this?" I'm just clicking through all these things. There's, there's like, I don't even know how many there are. There's what, and it, and it says too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had the opportunity to like invite people to join federations before. Is that solely as protection against like? Colonial nations, or is that some kind of like higher level alliance that I'm just I have never experienced before? I have no, I have fucking no idea. Uh, it's it, like it, I, okay, it's like it's like a defensive pact. So if you, okay. if the three of us are in a in a, in a federation, and anyone hmm. from outside of the federation attacks us, we all protect each other. So I could do that, and I'm gonna send you one. Oh whoa, if, why? Did that work? Whoa. Okay. I see the same same thing just happened to you. Then. Yep. Ah. Too bad, 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 too bad. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them. I don't know. It's weird. Why'd you swat the hornet's nest, man? I didn't know it was going to do the same thing to me. All right, I'm good. I'm, I'm through them all. <laughs> all right, fuck federations. So let's just do it with each other anyway. Yeah. Let's, let's, I'm going to try it on. Let's try it once. Anyway. Pause, maybe. Here. You guys are trying to desync your own games. <laughs> I sent you one, Matt. I didn't uh, get anything. Northern Line. I sent it to Northern Line because uh, I have like, a... Okay. No, uh, no it again. There you go. The, you guys are the guys when, like, when somebody says, hey, don't jump on the elevator. It has, like, a reputation for getting stuck. You, you wait till it like, gets, like, halfway up, and then you just take a little jump, right? That's, <laughs> that's the vibe I'm getting right here. Uh, right. Uh, on the bright side, I have a claim on Minnesota. Oh, really? Which doesn't mean anything because Minnesota's barren land anyway. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. I don't know. You're going to have to fight off some I'm seriously gonna, bad you, dudes to get that land. I'm not worried about it right now. You could attack it. Just attack them. No, just it, attack them. You could yeah. attack the natives, I guess. But attack, attack the dirt. That's just, <laughs> just run in with my fucking hatchets and bows and just fire things. The native plants. Mathis, we're doing like a race for for Minnesota because I want to swallow up the, your like Iowa. What the hell, uh, Aruba? <laughs> you sent me a diplomatic insult. <laughs> How what dare you, sir? You, you didn't want to join my federation, so <laughs> here you go. <laughs> Jesus. I'm just, waiting for my, I'm just waiting for my settlers to finish up. I'm losing 0.5 gold a month right now. Ooh, the, the, 0.5? Wow. Yeah. That's a lot, man. I'm losing it to army maintenance and co uh, colony maintenance. Colonies are expensive. Yeah, right? they are. Wait, Fucking 2.16 uh, what is that, a month? Jesus. I want to crank but, your colonial maintenance down. But we talked about it, like, in the last, in the last half video. Um, if you take it to, like, say, 75% of the slider, then you get, like, 60% of the bonus for less than that worth of the cost. So that make, if that makes any sense, you get like the majority of the bonus. All right, I'm making money again now. I brought it down about a quarter of the way. Yeah, see? Now, I also noticed I have an advantage over you two, which I didn't expect. I didn't realize until just now. If you press uh, go to the trade map mode. Yeah. Oh, you're so close to that uh, trade note. I, I saw it, actually. I'm in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and I've discovered it. You guys are in Chesapeake Bay. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually getting a lot more money than you guys are because I have my merchant collecting from trade there. Yeah, that makes sense. So I get a 10% bonus to trade income, and I also get a ton of trade power because uh, my capital is in the node. Oh, so we, uh, Mathis and I actually have to discover the, the trade node for Chesapeake Bay. 
That's right. You've got to like search for it. And I think it's actually really far to the east. I think I can east. see it. Can I just march my men over there? Yeah, well, no, you have to actually, you can't explore Terra Incognita. So. Oh. Yeah, you need oh, to gotcha. explore or conquistador. Mm hmm. So Good that's. Lucky, uh, Aruba. My, my Casa's belly is. Uh, gonna expire? Expiring. Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Very can, extremely you, lucky. You just dissolve this alliance right now. You can turn it's this not around. not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta remember, we. This is like a "if I knew then what I know now" type scenario. We're the New World nations. We know that uh, you know there's gonna be people with guns coming over the sea soon. We have like the, our like, seers our tell us so. Exactly. Oh my God! What is this? A loan offer. We have to pay an interest of twenty yearly. Who's that? Decline. Uh... <laughs> Aruma sent me a, a loan oh, offer. Okay. He offered to loan me one ducat. And <laughs> one Very singular generous. ducat. And my interest payment was 20 ducats per year. Oh, good. It's 20, 20%. Oh, sorry. When it says like 20.0, I thought it was like 20 yeah. ducats. <laughs> no, that would be, I, that would be a ripoff. Yeah, that would, well, my, would... My offer was perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Why don't I just put that loan offer on like this credit card that I just got <laughs> from a stall at my university? <laughs> So can we, do you think, can we maybe try speed three? <laughs> it's so slow, there's nothing going, nothing happening. I don't know though, man, you don't mess with a good thing. Okay, all right. I'm just gonna keep on sending you loan offers, so I don't know what else to do. Don't send me any more loan, <laughs> send it. Start colonizing, colonize Ohio. You can't though, because it takes so long to uh, get a colony up. My chief, we were amused to discover that we now have our independence guaranteed by the Abenaki. <laughs> I like how we were amused by it, we're like, ha <laughs> ha. They're so funny. Yeah, you're so funny. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I am funny. I'm comical. I so do. here's the thing. Like, the thing about the Indian play that I think is kind of strange is, on the one hand, there's a building that reduces your advisor cost by 50%. And you yeah. think, okay, I want to I want to get that building, and then I want to get enough money that I can actually have some advisors, and I can try to keep up with the Europeans. Mm -hmm. But th there's no point. Because as soon as the Europeans are next to you, you just press that uh, reform government button. Yeah, and you sense. you instantly gain technology all the way up so that you're you're two points below them on each tech group. Oh, really? And so if you're like level two and they're at level 15, now you're at level 13. That is really good, actually. So what's the point? There's no point mm -hmm. in even trying to tech up. You just wait. It's just a waiting game. Sit around. Stockpile your money right now. Later. <laughs> I'm about to finish my first colony. You're a, yeah. It's amazing how fast like that advantage can compound for you because you started first, but also my colony's only like less than 20% of the way there. And I just realized that uh, I I didn't have my settler <laughs> in Muskegee actually. He was hanging out having a cup of joe in Mobile. Oh yeah. <laughs> um so yeah. That was dumb. I still like, want. I still don't know what my resources are in my fucking Dakota and Padawan. The that fuck? seems like a bug. I mean, you should really find those by now. Unknown. We do not yet know what kind of resources province has. Of course, Actually, I don't know what's going on in in half of my provinces too. I, I know huh. what's in Iowa though. That fish. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Iowa, big uh, big fishing state. <laughs> if I remember correctly. All right. <laughs> Perhaps your your people are just lazy and they won't go exploring. <laughs> lazy people. Let's see. Actually, you know, Iowa does in our game looks like a great uh, fishing area. Well, yeah, in our fish in our game, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Chesapeake Bay is where. Maybe in the next episode we'll try going up to. Uh, okay. We'll try going That's up to speed three. Because you're right, it is a little bit. There's not a whole lot going on right now. Where's the Chesapeake Bay? The, the most exciting part for me is when the month ticks over and I get to see if my colonist is going to get an extra 25 people or not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, there's a chance. There's a 54% there's a chance my colony finishes in two weeks. Hey, pretty good. It's pretty exciting. All right, relatively speaking. This is the time we point out this is, we're, we're playing for the long game right now. Yes. In, in some ways, we're subject to the, the whims of the AI. And Arumba said uh, that, well, you were saying off camera that in your single player game, it took them until 1600 to actually get to you. Yeah. That is crazy. It's... Yeah, they're really bad at exploring, <laughs> apparently. 
So maybe if, if things start working out well for us, what we can do is start like expanding eastwards, and we'll go so, like say hello to them. Like, hey, we're over here. <laughs> yeah. Don't, please don't bother us. Well, it was the strangest thing too. Uh, Portugal had Austria in a personal union. Like Whoa. Portugal controlled Austria. That is unusual. The way that that happens through like disputed succession, right? And then you have a royal marriage, and then there's a chance if you have more prestige that you'll put them in a personal union. E, well, you actually have to claim them, or it's possible you can inherit. Yeah, if they have, like same dynasty. Okay. Kind of, kind of a slower, more luck-based thing. Yeah. Oh, you're okay. I was wondering. I thought like I lost vision on the map, but I see. How much are you making a month, Arumba, from trade? From trade, one dollar thirteen. Nice. Hey, making, that's actually really good. I'm making thirty cents. Yeah, twenty-one cents over here. I don't even know if I can do anything to fix that. Like, I can't route anything. I don't think right now. Oh, once you get uh, conquistadors, then you just walk to the the right side and you'll be okay. <laughs> or you can slowly colonize like one province at a time. I think I'll do that. I don't know about you guys are expanding eastwards. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to surround Cherokee. I think and. You know, like, why why pressure each other over there? We've got so much space to expand out here. Where's the Powahatan? Uh, they, they migrated again. They're just oh, below they're the way Cherokee. down there. Kansas. I think I have a... I can declare war on them. I have no cost of belly, but I have a mission to remove them from the map. You have no CB, though? No, it was a timed one, apparently. Uh, yeah, the, you have to be very cautious, and this is something that may be obvious to people who are not me. But you have to be very cautious about when to declare war, because uh, if you declare war with no CB, you get an automatic minus two to, to stability, which has, like, seriously negative consequences. Yeah, I'm going to cancel this mission and wait two years so I can take another one. It's five years, I think. Oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Five years. I'm, I'm in year two of uh, my five-year wait. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Micmac doing good. I'm almost, I'm, almost, I'm more than halfway done with this uh with this uh colonization though. And that's really good. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of concerned though cuz you took the one. There's no there's nothing else for me to colonize. I can't reach anything else. What so about this, north? This, this is the end of my colonization. Uh, can't do anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> it had a four base tax I wanted it. Well, because we're cooperating, we could maybe do something where like you know, Mathis sells you Shawnee, and then you give him like one of your provinces, and then Mathis kind of has some expansion through like it. Fox and Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Exactly. <laughs> I thought Fox was yours. You've tried to take Fox so many times. Yeah, but then I thought, out of the goodness of my heart, maybe I'll leave it for you. But also, like I lost it. Like, I would say more months. that you got destroyed every time you tried to take it, right? Yeah, you're not wrong. I just want more colonists. <laughs> Arumba, what do you think is better? Better relations over time or diplomatic reputation? If, if it's like equivalent values. It depends on your play style. Um, if you're being, if you have a lot of negative opinions, then the better relations over time is really good. Better relations over time only affects negative opinion scores. Okay. So if you have like 100 aggressive expansion, that will go away at a base of 2 per year. Gotcha. But if you add bonus 100% better relations, it goes away at 4 per year. Okay. Where diplomatic reputation is more of a pro proactive approach, like getting alliances, getting royal marriages, getting um, annexation done. It increases annexation rate by 0.1 per month per di right. diplo rep. I know way more about this game mathematically than I, sh than I should. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> I'm going to like overwhelm you with information. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. You know, it's nice to have that kind of access to deeper insight. Yeah. Well, I basically, I'm almost to the point now where I, I feel comfortable with EU4 enough like I did with CK2 when I first started making videos. Oh. Um, mm. Like you like got I played, it down to I played, base sciences? Yeah, I played uh, CK2 for like a year before I made a single video for YouTube. Wow. That's like where I am with CK2 now. <laughs> I've played CK2 for like 10 months. Yeah, and I've I'm made like there. 150 videos. I'm a little bit longer <laughs> than you. Yeah, you, because we talked about it at PAX East and you, like I was just getting into it then. Yeah. And, and you definitely had more knowledge than I did. I'm grateful native Shawnee have risen. Oh no, they've risen. Uh, you'll be fine. At least something happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, they do a lot of damage. Uh, oh, you insulted me. Well, <laughs> normally, like, if you have a native uprising and you're playing as, like, a European power, you just, like, 
this sounds like I'm meaning this to be offensive, but you just like shoot him, or, <laughs> yeah. like do a cavalry charge and like destroy them. But here, because you know we are the natives, it's a little bit more of a fair fight. I, I, think. I have a cost of belly against uh, Arumba now, though he insulted me. Yeah, he's he's brave like that. I don't know what <laughs> what he's thinking. He's guaranteeing our independence, and he insulted us. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. <laughs> there's nothing else to do. It's like it's, uh, sitting around. Hey, there's Scotland. Scotland has got some trade power in my node. Oh. Transfer that's... some trade upstream, downstream. So apparently my... Uh, well, if you click on the Gulf of St. Lawrence trade node... Oh, see. yeah, I see. Scotland's in there, and then you hover over the current trade power, you can see transfer some traders downstream plus 2.2. So mm. that lets us know... Well, we, we could already tell just from looking at the, the connections, but... Um, Scotland is in the trade node there, whichever one it is. Must be coming that, from. That, is that the North, the North yeah, Sea? Scotland is the North Sea, I, I believe. Anybody have any advisors yet? No. no. It, like Arun yeah. was saying, it, it basically makes no sense to hire them. Yeah. For tech purposes, anyway. I guess you can still get like a shitty effect from the advisor. Yeah, like maybe maybe the morale of armies guy would make sense or something, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep boosting my stability. Trade range, maybe. Might as well. Are you you spending your your diplo points? Yeah, I'm spending you... some diplomatic power. I still have 425. After Can you attack? It. Can you guys attack the Cherokee or something? Uh, I I can. I don't want to move my men out of the out of my colony. Yeah, that's the thing. I want my colony to still be here, and I'm like just getting back to like economic. Okayness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see. Well, we did. We didn't all luck into having a trade node right next to us on the Ooh. randomized new world, right? God. That's true. That's true. I did get fortunate there. Mm. I actually uh, like. I will be able to attack Cherokee pretty soon. But I'll, uh, well, would you be able to send like your twelve or at least like half of them to join me? Probably all of them because the Cherokee are they were fairly strong last time we fought them. Well, to defend against the the natives, I would not really worry. I would only keep if I'm at full maintenance. I'd only keep two regiments behind. Okay, so you could send ten, mm -hmm. and I could send three for now. But by the time I declared war, I could probably uh, pull another one up. Maybe another two. I you know also could just take like a ton of loans, but uh, it might have to wait until fourteen sixty five. Because I don't have uh, a Casas Belly, but also, uh, so th I've never seen this before, but I think my war exhaustion is so low that no Casas Belly is minus two, but war exhaustion is plus two? Or does that just mean that if I declare war, my war exhaustion goes up by two? It goes up by two. That's a new Oh, that would be match. so much better if it was like the, the Norse in CK2, where if they don't declare war for a while, they start losing prestige. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish... I wish my tribe was like, come on, look, we need to go to war. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll unite the country. <laughs> we know, just murder people. Exactly. Hmm. Have you guys been building buildings that are not for economic use, except for the uh, manpower one? I did have, I have, I have a local def defense one. What buildings do I have here? Let's see. I built the 25% tax income one, the yeah. plus one income one. And yeah. that's it. Okay. That's where I'm at like, right. Like, unless I'm desperate for manpower, I don't see any purpose to it. I mean... I have goods produced up by 25%. Yeah, that one makes sense, too. Yeah. Um, local production efficiency is up by 25%. Whatever that does. I need to start building some more men is the issue, I think. Still, you guys are both much larger than I am. You have In five like, provinces. Geographically, five yeah. Four. You have five provinces. I have three. I have four well, seven, have, though. Keep that in mind. I, I have four provinces and one colony that's fledgling. Yeah, but, but you, still make, you, make, you make money from the colony. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Actually, I do make I make two and a half uh, ducats monthly. Or, or that, that's annually, right? Uh, the annual income, yeah, on the building yeah. screen. So I make two and a half ducats annually from that province. That's pretty good. In the colony? It's, yeah, it's producing mm -hmm. fur, I think. That's why. You can see what your colony's producing. Oh, my colony still doesn't know what it's producing. Mm. What's the best resource that we're likely to find in, like, what is basically North America for us? Is it fur? 
Fur is one of the better ones. Like, okay. I think the highest base price is three gold, and fur is currently trading at four point six three. Oh wow! So yeah. it's it's pretty good. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap up this really exciting, riveting, and nonstop <laughs> episode of Europa Universalis for Conquest of Paradise. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, dropping a like and a comment below helps perpetuate this series forward. And as always, in the description box below will be a link to both Arumba and Northern Lions channel to see their things from their perspective and the riveting things that are happening on their screen. And make sure you pop by tomorrow for more Europa Universalis. See you later. We can do Speed 3 next time. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> see you soon.